Hello third graders and welcome to Writer's Workshop this week. We are going to be doing an assessment practice this week on Edge Elastic. As we're going through it, make sure you are following along. You can split your screen so you can watch me and do your assignment at the same time. When you go on to Edge Elastic, you're gonna go to, um, it's called informational writing, informational writing. You can do that by clicking on my classes, scrolling down to homeroom, homeroom, and then clicking on informational writing, or you might see it on the dashboard page. We are not going to submit this until Friday. Remember that do not submit it until Friday. We are gonna work on this for three days. So our informational writing is going to be about Dr. Martin Luther King. And we're gonna read through our passage and then start, um, start outlining today. So it says, using information from the articles in the video, write a report describing the role that Martin Luther King Jr. had on changing the laws for all Americans. Be sure to include evidence from the articles and the video to support your answer. So let's go ahead and watch the video. Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1929. Faith was always an important part of daily life as both his father and grandfather were Baptist ministers. He thrived at a segregated high school, graduating at 15, before heading off to Morehouse College. He then dedicated three years to theological study at Crozier Seminary in Pennsylvania. While earning his graduate degree at Boston University, he met Coretta Scott, who he would marry and have four children with. King and his family settled in Montgomery, Alabama, when he became the 20th pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. When Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to relinquish her seat to a white man on a Montgomery City bus in 1955, the incident lit a fire under the burgeoning civil rights movement. His boycott um, of the bus system in Montgomery, Alabama was tremendously, tremendously successful because he was incredibly strategic and he worked with other people to get the individuals in Montgomery, Alabama to understand that they weren't going to take it anymore. King's experience, passion for the cause, and position in the community gave him the credentials to become a leader in the 381-day boycott of the city buses. On December 20th, 1956, the Supreme Court ruled segregated buses to be unconstitutional. This was a major victory for the civil rights cause and proved King's nonviolent methods of protest could yield results. King was now the national face of the civil rights cause. He was jailed over 20 times, was once stabbed in the chest, his house was bombed, and he suffered relentless personal attacks on himself and his family. For a man of peaceful intentions, he unfortunately spent much of his life the target of violent intent, yet the threats never stopped him. Dr. King inspired thousands of people through his eloquence, and through his fearlessness, especially after his home was firebombed with his wife and his children. They showed through their courage that they were prepared to give their lives to the cause of freedom. King worked tirelessly to promote the cause he so strongly believed in. And from 1957 through 1968, he traveled over six million miles delivered 2,500 speeches, wrote five books, and dozens of articles. His hard work and ability to communicate earned him such respect that he earned the ear of President John F. Kennedy, who personally met with King. Of all the speeches King delivered, none has stood the test of time like his famous I Have a Dream speech, symbolically delivered from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963 in front of 250,000 people, both black and white. King had become such a force in America that he was named Time Magazine's Man of the Year in 1963. 
a nice achievement indeed, but it paled in comparison when in 1964, he became the youngest man ever to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Martin Luther King Jr. was an American. He was deeply American. And what's striking to me is that he had more confidence and faith in American democracy, in the Constitution, and in the principles of fairness and opportunity than nearly all of his critics. While in Memphis to lead a protest march defending the rights of striking garbage workers in April of 1968, King delivered a rousing speech titled, I've Been to the Mountaintop. It would be his last, standing on the balcony of his second floor room at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, King was shot and killed. In 1983, Ronald Reagan signed a proclamation declaring the third Monday of every January, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a public holiday to celebrate the man and what he stood for. All right. So now we have two articles we are going to listen to. Now, when we begin after fall break, you are going to do one of these all on your own. You're not going to have a video, but you're going to have two passages. On Edge Elastic, the passages and whatever else we need to read is going to be in a list at the top. Okay, so the first one is called An American Leader. We're going to read through this one together and then start outlining some things in our text. Let's go ahead and begin reading. An American Leader, the story of Martin Luther King Jr. King was a leader who dreamed of a better world. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15th, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. Each January, Americans honor him on a holiday. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is observed on the third Monday of January each year. Unfair Laws When King was growing up, the laws in some places were unfair. The laws treated um, African-American people differently from white people. Amer African-Americans were not allowed to go to the same schools as white students. Many were also forced to sit in the back of buses. King had a dream. In the 1950s and 1960s, King worked to change unfair laws. He led peaceful marches and gave many speeches in 1963. King gave his famous, I have a dream that my four children, four little children will one day in a nation, live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Equal rights. As a result of King's hard work, equal right laws were passed. Those laws make sure that all Americans are treated fairly and equally. Let's read the final one. Great, Ameri great leader, honoring the great American. A memorial for Martin Luther King Jr. was built in our nation, nation's capital. Martin Luther King Jr. was a leader. He lived from 1929 to 1968. Americans honored him, honor him in January with a national holiday. He grew up in the southern part of the United States. At that time, laws treated African-American people differently from white people. African-Americans were forced to sit in the back of buses. They also had to use separate bathrooms and water fountains. When King was older, he worked to change those laws. As a result, equal rights laws were passed. Those laws provided the same rights to the Americans. In memory of King, King was honored with a memorial. A memorial is a statue or 
a place that honors a person or an event. The King Memorial is built on the National Mall. That is a park in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Memorials for some U.S. presidents are also on the mall. Sorry. The King Memorial opened in August 2011. It has a 30-foot statue of King. Sentences from some of his speeches are carved into a stone wall. The cost of the memorial was $100 million. A concert was held in September 2010 in New York City to raise the rest of the money. Many famous singers performed. The singers included Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, and Garth Brooks. The life of Martin Luther King, and here's a timeline from when he was born to when he passed away. Now today, we are just going to pull some, um, some facts that we want to use to answer our question. Let's read our question one more time. So then we can start adding that to our side box. Using information from the articles and the video, write a report describing the role that Martin Luther King Jr. had on changing the laws for all Americans. Be sure to include evidence from the articles to support your answer. Now, I am going to do this on class kick so you can see it, but you have the option to click the notepad and you can draw this on the notepad. So we're going to draw a chart to organize our writing. Now when we were writing our informational texts, we began with a introduction sentence. And that's what tells the reader what they're going to be reading about. And then we had multiple sentences. I'm actually going to redraw this so it makes more sense. Easier to see for you guys. Okay, so we have our introduction is going to be first. And then I can choose two to three things I want to talk about. So I, I want to talk about um, let's see, I can go back to the text and highlight some things I want to talk about. Wrong one. And I can look at the headings to help me decide what I'm gonna talk about in each paragraph. So I wanna talk about his, his speech, his I had a dream speech. If you double click on something on class on Edge Elastic, it will highlight it for you. So I want you to highlight dream. I wanna talk about um, his equal rights and what he did to get equal rights for everyone. And then I wanna talk about his memorial because I know in both of these um, texts, there is information about his memorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my outline. Yours will be over on the side over here. So I have my introduction and then I'm gonna write about his speech. And then what he did for to fight for equal rights. And then his memorial. And finally, we end ours with a conclusion. Now, this is the beginning of our outline. What I'm going to do is just add facts next to each part. My introduction, I will create when I am writing the passage. For the speech, I'm going to go back to my text and find some evidence that I can use. So I'll go to one of those, I had a dream. So I know it was called, I had a dream. Let's see. It was in 1963. So I want you to highlight this, 1963.
And then let's see if it talks about it in the second passage too. I'm looking for his speech. No, I see it right here. I had a dream speech. Oh, and it was in Washington, DC. So I can use all of that to help me with my outline. So in Washington, DC, I'm just gonna jot down all of my evidence. 1963. And it was called, I had a dream speech. All right, I have that. And then I can talk about equal rights. What did he talk about for equal rights? Go back to the first passage. And he wanted to make sure that Americans were treated fairly and equally. So that's one thing. I need at least two or three so then I can make a full paragraph. To fight for African American rights. That's the second one I'm going to use. Let's see if there's anything over here. He was working to change laws. All right, so I'll add that to my outline. He wanted to change laws, have everyone treated fairly and equally and fighting for African American rights. I'm gonna have to spread this out so it'll all fit. You are writing this inside your edge elastic. And finally, the memorial. I already remember it was in Washington, DC is where it was located. They had a concert to raise money. And it cost $100 million. All right. And then we will do our conclusion after we are writing as well. Now, this is just my brainstorming page. This is just my brainstorming page, and we call this an outline. This is an outline of every, all of the evidence that I found and each paragraph and what I'm going to write about. Starting on Wednesday, we are going to begin writing.